Silk Exclusive. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Whoa, 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 Homie picks. We got the Giant fan, Louis Law. We got the Colts fan, Inst Insta Benny, aka Bet and Benji. I don't know. We got to get you another nickname or something. <laughs> <laughs> the Ravens fan, the Dutter Man, aka Mr. Spread Love, because it's the Brooklyn yeah. way. You know what I mean? And of course, y'all know I'm a Niners fan. I, you know, y'all know what it is. Hi, mom. But uh, gentlemen, welcome. We, we got another season of Homie Picks underway. One episode in the books already, which means one week is in the books already. Um, at the time of this recording, you guys be planning and preparing for the next episode. We not can get to that just yet. But I want to talk about a few things that I wanted to get you guys' opinion on. You know, But first off, how you feeling? One week of football. Football's back. How are how, how we thinking about this season so far? How we how we feeling? Was, was it a happy... Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday. Did y'all enjoy it? What, what, what's your thoughts, real quick? Talk to me, Jared. You, like, you, you got a smile on your face. So let me see what, what you got to say. How'd you feel about I mean, this? The, real quick? I mean, the person who the person who was talking the most won. The, it's only team who's won. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, and we all here suffer the loss. Uh, my Ravens got, you know, we got, we got Chiefs. Well, we're going to talk about the teams first. We're going to we go in there and we go to the teams. I'm just saying, like, Just tell me know, how you felt about the weekend, you know. I'm just saying, you know, my team got Chiefs, but we good. Like, you know, football, football is back. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, football's back. is beautiful, you know, just like the Brazilian woman. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I like how this season's going to be uh, coming up. A lot, lot to talk about with just mm -hmm. week one in, in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Ben, talk to me. How how you feel? Football's back. How you feeling? Feeling good. I mean, wild wild start to the to the football season, I must say. Particularly mm -hmm. on Sunday morning, that was a a lot of news popping off. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But it was definitely a fun fun weekend. I can't complain. Um, I, I do not like that we took the L the way we took the L. But you know, <laughs> well, we gonna talk about that. We gonna talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, overall, can't complain. It's pretty good. All right, all right. Lou. Um, I know off camera I fired you because <laughs> <laughs> you picked against my team. Look, you know, a little behind the scenes, you know, I do the editing for homie picks, and um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I took it personal when uh, <laughs> Jared said Niners, Ben said Niners. You 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 picked the Jets, but um, we yeah. won. We, like I said, I'm not going to go into that right now. We're not going to go into that. But so so, so you're back. You you you're I'm here. glad football's back. I'm glad I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I rescind. I rescind the termination. Um, uh, yeah, I that was a flag on the play. You know, Take it back. So, right. I, talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm glad football's back. Uh, it, it was a quiet eight months without, you know, um, some some action. And Sunday started like Ben said off with a bang. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's good. It's good to have it back, man. Uh, I don't think there's a sport like football that can, you know, energize the entire week. You know the way the way it's going, the way it's trending. You know, so I'm looking forward to to more more great weeks mm -hmm, like we had mm -hmm. week one. So a few, a few. Um, I wanted to get you guys on here to, to talk about a few, uh, I guess, big story, big news topics of this NFL season. Um, it's only right that we start off with the kickoff. You know, one of the biggest moves this year was they completely revamped the kickoff. Um, took a little bit from the XFL, um, but put a little tweak to it, add a little edge to it. Um, and I have here the, the official rule set. Obviously, we've seen it now. One week is in the books. Preseason, they've been doing it as well. We've seen it a couple of times. But <clears throat> the new kickoff rule, kickers will kick off from their own 35-yard line. The other 10 players from the kicking team will be lined up on the opponent's 40-yard line. The receiving team will have at least nine players lined up at the setup zone, which is between the 35 and 30-yard lines, with two returners standing in the landing zone from the 20-yard line to the goal line. 
no players can move except for the kicker and returner until the ball is received by one of the returners. Then the returners can do these two things. They, returners can return the football wherever it lands, or they can let it, be, you know, let it roll for a touchback. A touchback at the 20-yard line would occur if the ball touches the ground or a player in the landing zone and they down it, of course, or and if, it ro if it rolls beyond the goal line and down into the end zone. Typical old school touchback rules, but also a touchback could occur at the 30 yard line if the ball goes out of bounds behind, behind the receiver's goal line and it strike, or if it strikes the goal post or if it lands at or beyond the goal line and down in the end zone. And also, additionally, what they didn't put on here was the ball could be moved to the 40 yard line um, as it did before with the illegal procedure rule if it went out of bounds, but also now if the ball does not even reach the landing zone automatically moves to the 40 yard line, which is a big, big deal. Um, so again, like I said, pre three preseason games, uh, one week in the books, we've seen the new kickoff rules and we've seen one actually get returned. So somebody figured it out first. Um, but talk to me, Lou, what do, what do we think of the new kickoff rules? Uh, I like it. I mean, it, it it's going to play a big role in fourth quarters where teams, you know, strategically place that ball. I think, it gives a new set. It gives it empowers the kickers a little bit. You know, they can go out there and actually show what they can do instead of just kicking into the end zone. Um, I'm interested to see how teams will use this going further, especially like if you want to pin a team back at the 20, you let it land in, in the landing zone, let it dribble out of bounds. Um, it's it's going to be very, very dynamic. Um, I, I want to see what kind of trickery some of these uh, special teams coach coaches can, uh, can uh, implore um, with the two receivers back there, you know, two receivers. That's something completely new to us. Um, and I, I just like it. I, I like it. It, it. it takes away that often injured player that we have in a kickoff or a punt return, um, especially if we see so many of our fantasy players returning kicks now. You know, it it, 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 it lessens that um, impact on their body. So I, I like it. I'm interested to see where it goes further. Mm -hmm. Ben, tell me, what's your thoughts on the new kickoff rule? Yeah, I mean, um, it does make it a, a little more uh, interesting, a little bit different wrinkle. Because, yeah, most of the time people are just kicking out and they weren't even attempting to run it. But now you see some teams have attempted to run it. It makes, gives them more excitement for sure. I mean, even some people have ran it out of the end zone. So they they are motivated to run it a little bit more because the, the way how the defense is set up. So mm -hmm. there's a possibility if you could break that line, you can get that big run. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I do I do like it. I feel like it does bring a little bit of excitement. I, I just um would like to see how it plays out, like how it's strategic they get with it. But mm -hmm. so far so good. I like it. And it's like you said, it's like that one it's just one big wall. Exactly. Once you can get through that wall, it's daylight. So it's, you know, it's interesting to see how you said strategy to get through that line. Jared, tell me what your thoughts on the, the new kickoff rule. I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's a good rule. Um you know, same as what everybody's just said so far. You know, it. I think it adds a little bit more, di you know, a little bit more dynamics into it. It makes it more exciting. Um, you know, I think the kickoff rule. Um, you know, so it's funny that that wasn't a thing that I was thinking that needed to be adjusted. You know, in football, but you know, it's one of the things that I appreciate that got adjusted because you know it got, does create some level of excitement. Um, it, it, it incentivizes people to run, and um, you know, I think, uh, you know, just showing, I guess, some signs of trying to move forward and progress into um, a new generation of football, you know, similar to, like, how basketball became more of an offensive thing, you know, and less, and less reliable, well, less defense, <clears throat> let's get more offense. So I think, you know, similar kind of vein is that where you're trying to incentivize the game to make it more energized. Um, so I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In front of you mentioned, uh, similar to basketball, they're making it more offensive-minded. Another rule change they, they added was um, outlawing the, the hip drop tackle, but they have failed to call it, and I've seen it a couple of times, including the 49ers game where they tried to hurt Juwan Jennings, but it's a, you know something that most players have felt that it's hard to even, you know, uh, gauge, especially in live action, you know, because the hip, like, obviously, if you're grabbing somebody, you're pulling them or whatever, it's like, is it the hip drop or you just momentum or, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, a, it's a tough rule for them to even kind of call on the fly. 
Um, but a lot of people were against them even doing it. Obviously, everyone understands the dangers of that type of tackle, but that's been tackling forever. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but like I said, it's one of them rules that they said they added, and we really haven't seen it called too much. Um, another thing that they have been calling a lot of, except for against the Kansas City Chiefs, which I'm going to not go crazy on again, but um, the um, the linemen, you know, either not lining up correctly and moving too quick. Um, I think uh, illegal formation is the call for that one. And they have called a few of those except for against the Chiefs. Um, <clears throat> but that one has been kind of looked into more. So, yeah, so they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, get, get the game right, trying to get things right in order. Um, another big announcement that came Sunday right before the games, uh, they announced – the halftime show performer for the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 59 in New Orleans, Mr. Kendrick Lamar. Um, and it, and it, created a lot of it created a lot of outrage uh, with, his, with his name being announced. Um, people feel that uh, it should be Lil Wayne. Um, people in, uh, uh, attributing it to Kendrick and Drake's battle. Uh, some people, Nicki Minaj for one, going in on Jay Z. Uh, a whole bunch of Twitter's been going crazy since 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 Sunday. Um, Jared, tell me what's your thoughts on the announcement itself and the the backlash of it. Mr. Duckworth, I'm excited. I don't care. Like <laughs> I can care less what Nicki Minaj want to say or what Birdman want to say. Like. They, they, they really, they really mean nothing to me. Now, if Jay Z doesn't want to pick Drake, you know that's that's his thing. You know, like Jay Z is in charge of this. Since Rihanna said, "I don't want to do it," you know, she basically kneeled, and then, and then they got Jay Z to say, "So you'll make Rihanna do it." Um, it is what it is. Like I don't know why people think that Wayne is entitled to do it. Um, the Super Bowl has been in New Orleans. I forgot how many times since Lil Wayne. Eleven. Eleven times. And I forgot how many times it's been there since Lil Wayne got popping. Probably well, eleven. Like, <laughs> no, probably about two. <laughs> <laughs> probably that too. To, to, but... to your point, they do they, they go there often because it's a dome. And right. Super Bowl being in February, they they do a lot of the dome right. locations or the the southern states where it can still be good weather. So but continue. Hell, continue. plus you no, plus you still got body girl around the same time too. So mm -hmm. it's a nice little party around Super Bowl party anyway. But uh, I don't know why people think that it's entitled to go to the hometown person like that. Maybe because Jay Z's there, so they have a better chance of getting a rapper um, there and such. But um, you gotta understand, uh, it's a business, and honestly, Kendrick lose a needle in this business right now. Like nobody's gonna. Nikki, Nikki is mad at Jay for her own personal reasons. So you're just taking this as a shot to Jay, just to be taking a shot to him, thinking that you're entitled, that he's entitled to give Wayne the show. Um, I've said it to, I think I said it in personal group, but you know, kind of the old, uh, the old Penn and Teller thing. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Like that's essentially what you need to do. Like, if anything, y'all hurting the chances of Wayne even being there, you know, as a secondary act. Like, y'all just shut up, stop bitching about it. Um, or even performing. Like, what is it? Saturday night where they have like the Pepsi right, local concert right. thingy. You know, promotes but yeah. Like you know, it's 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 whack that you're gonna show outrage. Like, support an artist. You know, support that y'all even get in the stage. Like, I, maybe y'all thought because Dre did L.A. last, you know, last year that, oh, now it's going to be hometown people. That's not true. Travis Scott did a headline Houston. <laughs> you know, like, you're not going to get those kind of things. Like, just being happy that you're even on this stage before they go back and start having a Metallica or whoever the hell is popping in the rock world. Because I have no idea who the hell is popping in the rock world. So, you know, just shut up. Mind your business. Ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Um, I do find it funny that that Drake said big as a Super Bowl and then Kendrick headlines the Super Bowl. It's gonna be fucking amazing. Um, it's gonna be even more amazing to hear, not like us, <laughs> in front of ninety thousand people. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it. 
Lou, tell me what's your, what's your thoughts on the uh, the Super Bowl halftime show announcement? I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I go back to the one thing. One, artists don't get paid for the Super Bowl. So what have you done for me lately that's going to draw people to watch the Super Bowl halftime show of Lil Wayne? Not much. Not much. Kendrick has had the world on fire the whole summer. From May to July. It was on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, you don't get to host, you don't get to show, you don't get to perform because it's your hometown. Right. Like, I granted, Dre got it, but that's Dre. Mm-hmm. You, you don't tell Dre no. <laughs> and, and to that point, it was Dre, it was Snoop, Snoop. it was Kendrick. Kendrick. But then yeah. it was also Eminem from Detroit. Yep. Mary J. Blige from Yonkers, 50 yeah. Cent from Queens. Like, it wasn't yeah. just local, you know what I'm saying? So you know, I, I think I think artists have this sense of entitlement now that it should be me, it should be me, it should have been me. You haven't done what have you done for me lately? Um, you know, I, I grant it, I get it. Wayne is big in the sports world. You know, he he does a sober skip beer that's coming up. Um, but that doesn't guarantee you get the spot. Like it, it has to go to somebody that one is gonna put on a hell of a show. Like Kendrick is gonna put a if we all seen his last concert, he gonna put on a show. Um, and I think that's what Jay Z picked. Someone's gonna put on the show at the end of the day. And his last two concerts are on Amazon Prime. The Pop Out Show and right. his Mr. Morale concert is on Prime. He has two shows streaming right now on Amazon Prime. Yep, that just shows you. you how big of an artist he is. You know, what I'm saying to have shows that you know Prime felt is something to add to their to their lineup. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this could be a just it could just be Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He don't need nobody else. And his Mr. Morale um tour is the highest grossing hip hop tour for a single artist. Um Drake and 21 Savage together beat that the, the, the money gross, but Kendrick by himself is the only name on the bill. And he has the highest grossing name for a solo artist in hip hop yeah. tour wise. Hundred and something, hundred and ten million dollars gross or something like that. So Again, it just shows how big of an artist that he is, how big of a draw he is worldwide. So, so stop ben, the crying. Just oh, ben, sorry, Luke. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, ben, talk I, to I, me. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you guys. Like, definitely. Like, right now, he's just the hot artist right now. So, like, it's the smart decision because you want mm-hmm. eyeballs on the on the game. You know, you want eyeballs on the on the halftime show. So you get somebody that's really hot at the moment. You know, I'm kind of disappointed they didn't get picked Taylor, but, you know, Taylor Swift, but, you know, well, you that's know, neither here nor there. She'll probably be there they, they want the Chiefs to be there again, so, you know. Nah, nah, but, but all, all truth be told, no, I, I feel like that was, that was a good pick. Like like I said, right now he's hot, you know, his music's popping right now, so it, it definitely will draw attention. And that's really the, the, the name of the game. You just want the most eyeballs on that. So I think it's a smart business decision and just a good pick because right now he's hot. You know, he has good music out right now. Everything's hidden for him. I, I have no problem with it. And at the end of the day, it's the fucking halftime show. You know what I mean? Like, just Ooh. enjoy it. Like, who cares really? Most of the time in the past, we didn't even care who was there. Now they're just making it a big deal. Like, oh, he's not from the hometown. Who cares? Like, really? Who cares? It's just... As long as they they put up a good show, I'm with it. So, I, and I can definitely see him putting up a good show. And like you said, it's a business decision. Um, since his announcement uh, about an hour or so before the first games on Sunday, so around twelve o'clock, um, Kendrick's Spotify searches went up four hundred and thirty-five percent. So, to your point, Jared, uh, nobody gets paid for the halftime shows. Nicki Minaj said he chose the bag. Well, the bag wasn't the show. The bag is people interest. And just like the verses was during the, during the um, pandemic, the verses that Swiss Beats and Timberland had going on, people that did verses um, battles, their streams would go up because people hear the back catalog. Oh, snap. I haven't heard that song in a while. I forgot they made that. I forgot that was, oh, yeah. Let me go listen to that again. Well, before Kendrick even stepped on the stage, just the announcement alone got yeah. people to say, let me go hear some of his music so I can... Uh, uh, envision what he's gonna do because for some people in their minds they feel he's only made diss tracks to Drake. He has no other music. <laughs> I mean, but those are pretty good. No. I can't, I can't has, front though. <laughs> yeah, he has one song and one song only. You know, <laughs> that's the only song he's ever made. Not like us. 
He's never made another song, never made an album. His albums are not being studied in schools. He doesn't have a Pulitzer Prize, right. a bunch of grant. No, he does not. He only has one song, according to people. So he's just a conscious rapper. <laughs> and he's just a conscious rapper. But people, the 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 the, the, the Kendrick might be the biggest anomaly of of hip hop. Um, he's telling you his hood stories, you know, giving you his truth, his life, and it 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 became pop. <laughs> you know, it, people don't. I think that's one of the reasons why Drake, to, in my opinion, I don't know allegedly, is jealous of Kendrick, and there's been a bit of jealousy with him because, you know, perfect example, since Not Like Us came out in May that's the only song Kendrick has dropped and Drake has dropped about 15 songs <laughs> okay and it, it's been hit or miss he had to make a whole other Instagram page to leak them and drop them and tease them and see if the, how do people feel about it he did a whole uh, a, a promo for Camila Cabello she had two songs to help her album and it didn't push it he's been dropping like crazy he, he's a numbers guy Kendrick is more quality over quantity, and he, he his his he finds the way to make it you know palatable and, and and digestible to the masses because we all know we'll bootleg something in a minute, but the people that do buy or even or now stream don't look like us, but they're the ones that you know control the market and and that's the key demographic of the Super Bowl, you know what I mean. When and, and and to your point, Ben, like we don't care. We here for the game. We here for the, but the business side of it is, um, they want to keep retention to the channel, so it's a rotating thing. CBS, NBC, Fox. I forgot who has it this year, um, but they want to keep people on that channel. They don't want people to turn away. You know, when the game stops. Uh, Quick history uh, in living color. Uh, did a did a did a, a episode during one halftime show show went back when they just did stats and halftime recap. That's what they did. It was just regular regular game. Oh, let's talk about the first half. What's the stats? Let's run numbers. People turned away. Oh, I'm not watching this. I'm not watching. I remember. This. I was watching Living Color that year. Right. People, everybody turned <laughs> to Fox. I think it might have been on CBS. So everybody turned to Fox to watch Living Color for the quick 20 minute, 30 minutes, and the ratings went ridiculous over there. The next year, they said, all right, we're getting Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay, Michael Jackson became the halftime show to keep people on that channel. And what that does is it increases um, ad revenue for, for the for the NFL. Because even that commercial slot before the halftime performance, where they just say, okay, the first calf is done. After this commercial break, we're going to come back with so-and-so performing. People stay, or even some people don't even watch the game. They turn at that moment to the game. Mm -hmm. You know, to this to this channel, so that commercial spot right there is very important because now we can sell commercial ads ad space, and they charge for thirty seconds millions of dollars. So they just increased ad revenue for that time slot, which is twenty thirty minutes. You know, what I'm saying between the, between the halves, those, those commercial breaks are going to be some of the most expensive ones. You know, what I'm saying it's all about business. And unfortunately, like I said, I'm a, I'm a fan of Wayne. Not a huge Wayne fan and anything like that, but I'm a fan of Wayne. He doesn't have music that works for Super Bowl halftime. I'm sorry. Um, he could do an edited version of Lollipop. He could do... You, you mean you don't want to hear me? You don't want to hear Mrs. Officer? He could do an edited <laughs> version of that. But again, that's very, you know, sway back and forth. It's not anthem music, you know, it's not going to get the stadium hype, it's not going to get people at home tuning in, you know, Kendrick, there's, there's video clips of him in Mexico, okay, doing songs from his last album, which people say, oh, there's no hits on that album, I can't listen to it again, the Mr. Morale tour, he was in Mexico City, and had the whole crowd singing along, okay, English is probably their second language, but they knew the words to that song, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But so, you, you know what? You know what though? Like honestly, like thinking about it more, it's really ain't about Wayne. Um, I, 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 it's not really about Wayne. I think Wayne is just being used as a vehicle. Absolutely, I was, like, was going to get to that. It's, 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 it's really, it's really about them. So the loudest mm -hmm. ones in the room are the ones who are the most mad. They're thinking. They're thinking is, is very much if Wayne get gets there. 
I can get there. Mm -hmm. Drake can get there. Mm -hmm. The big timers, juvenile, mm -hmm. everybody. Like, we can all, Boozy is going to get, like, so, <laughs> why, why the fuck are y'all so mad about, it's, it's not about Wayne, and I hate that, because Wayne has been quiet, and Wayne's probably know like, y'all using me. Why the fuck y'all bringing me in there? What'd no. I do? It, it, <laughs> like, it, it, it's, it's a selfish thing, like, especially Nicki Minaj. Like, she's looking at that as, if Wayne is there, I could go on stage too, or, you know, something like that, or, you know what I'm saying, like, and, and, and Wayne is being used as the scapegoat, but it's like, again, to your point earlier, it's been there 11 times. The last time it was there, Beyonce was the headliner. Nobody said nothing then. You know what I'm saying? She's from Houston. Bring your ass to Houston. You know, and, and Wayne's not even a New Orleans ambassador. He's a Packers fan. You don't see him at Saints games. You don't see him. Like, the Lions are, 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 are a top team now. We're going to get into that. But the Detroit Lions are a top team now. Their first uh, hosted um, um, playoff game in Detroit. D Eminem was there to kick off the cr hype the crowd up. And, you know what I'm saying? He's an ambassador for his city because that's his team. Wayne is not repping the New Orleans Saints. He ran out with the Green Bay Packers a couple years ago. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, that's not even, you know, it's, it's like, he's not, that. he's, he's, yeah. he, he did say he would love to, to do it, but he's not really even the representative for that. And the New Orleans sound is more of that jazz sound and, you know, and that's Kendrick sound. <laughs> Kendrick, you know, uses a lot of drown, uh, jazz music and stuff and, Again, if it wasn't for the beef, he might even bring Wayne out. Kendrick has pretty much said he's a big Wayne fan. Um, something he's, you know, been, 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 you know, acknowledged and everything. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, because of the situation that it's in, it will be, it will be an awkward spot for Wayne to even come out with him. So, we'll is it how... though? Is yeah. it though? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, Drake did fuck his girl. <laughs> But that's between them. That was years ago, and they've been seen together since then. So I don't know where they stand currently, but that's, you know, that's on them. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I mean, that's, that's, it, it will be awkward. I mean, unless, like I said, if they're not cool right now and, and Wayne mm -hmm. wants to really get on that stage, uh, him and Kendra got some songs together. <laughs> there's a lot of time. There's a lot of time between now and February. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, uh, you know Jay Z. You know picking or being part of the board that picks because I, I believe that in, in the internet's going crazy. Twitter has been arguing back and forth, whatever. The, originally, it was the, the 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 hosting city's council that would choose the actual performer. You know what I'm saying? Since then, Jay Z has been involved with it um, since about 2018, 2019. But I think it's still a board and a committee that chooses and the final say so is approval by New Orleans. So all the people or the hosting city, I should say, which is New Orleans at the time. So all the people that are saying New Orleans don't want him, da -da, don't want Kendrick, da -da -da. technically New Orleans does. You know, specific people in New Orleans might have preferred Lil Wayne, but New Orleans people that make the decisions, they want Kendrick in there because they know what money that's going to bring. You know what I'm saying? So. <sighs> You know, I'm like I said, I, I I I don't think Wayne would put on as good of a show to keep the retention to the channel. Um, Kendrick is definitely a performer, uh, a showman. Um, you know, and you know who knows where he's gonna go, what he's gonna do. Um, obviously, it's gonna be a cleaned up, you know, performance for the Super Bowl and national television, you know, um, um, broadcast television. So he's not gonna call Drake a pedophile. He's going to edit that up a little bit if he does if he does do not like us. But um, a whole stadium, you know, a dome of people saying A minor is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and singing along. But again, he's going to do his other hits as well too. So it's not going to be just not like us. He might do that last, but again, that's the biggest song at the moment. Um, but I think it's, I think it's, a, a, a very big over, you know, simplification just to say, oh, he's only here because of the beef. He's here because he's the hottest art at, at, artist at the moment. He's here because Drake finally 
you know, called him out and he won. <laughs> and if that's what grabbed the world's attention or, you know, America's attention at least, then so be it, you know. Um, it's not, you know, and people, people discrediting his catalog. Rihanna did it without a song on the radio. She hasn't put out an album in forever. Her Fenty, you know, beauty line is killing it, but for her to perform, it wasn't because just, oh, her, she got a, a song on the radio. No, her name still rung bells. You know what I'm saying? Usher was doing his residency in um, Vegas, so they did it in Vegas, you know what I'm saying? But he's not from Vegas, but he was there, he was in town, he was local, it made sense. Um, and again, he had put his album out, I think, afterwards. So he didn't have a new single or nothing really buzzing either. And he put on a great show. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 the local thing, it's whatever. Um, I look forward to the show. But we got a whole season to go before we even get to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> As I always say, I don't care who the show performer is if my team is in it. Because I'm not watching for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't care who's going to be in it. But if, if my team doesn't make it, then I'll care more. And, and I'm not, I don't mind Kendrick being in. But we'll get into the games a little bit now. Um, so, yeah, um, Sunday was also the, um, the first day for Tom Brady. That's right, the one and only Tom Brady, uh, the guy who won seven of them Super Bowl things, uh, Patriots and Buccaneers. Um, <clears throat> some call it a GOAT. Most people call it a GOAT. Uh, he's now an announcer for uh, Fox, NFL Sundays, uh, 10, 10 year, $375 million contract. So his first game was uh, the Cowboys and the Browns. Um, I saw some of it. Yeah, same. But uh, he was boring. I'm just going to put it out there. He was, he was boring. Um, and he was so boring specifically that um, Scott Hansen, uh, for most people know from a, you know NFL Red Zone, um, and Red Zone switches between games, you know at all times. So at the time he switched to that game, uh, specifically at, the t at one of the time the Cowboys kicker uh, Brandon Aubrey was lined up to kick a 66-yard kick, and he made it, but there was a delay of game penalty. Which moved it back seventy, you know, it would be, it would be a 70, 71 yard attempt if you tried again, and you know, t at that moment, Tom, you know, sixty six yards would have would have tied the record. Uh, and then by they Justin Tucker, uh -huh. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I, said by, I, I said by Justin Tucker. I was oh, waiting yeah, for it. I know he somebody, kicker. somebody got the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Don't kick her. <laughs> but um, seventy one yards, obviously five yards back from the penalty would have been a new record and they were lined up to do it. And, you know, Tom was just like, let me see if the quote is, uh, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? He said, Oh, he, he just said, basically, maybe they're going to rethink this <laughs> saying the Cowboys are going to just take it back. And, um, Scott Hansen said, uh, come on, Brady. Like you got to get more excited in the booth than that. And yeah. you know, that, I guess calling him out or whatever felt like, you know, some hate, some shade or whatever. And pretty much the next day, that night, I want to say, actually, um, Scott Hansen issued an apology on Twitter. And he said, and I'll quote, um, that was unfair and inconsiderate of me. Yes, I was saying it tongue in, tongue in cheek, but I didn't calculate how it may come across. So at Tom Brady, I apologize. I promise I am rooting for you in this new venture. He said that on Twitter and then Tom, uh, you know, quoted and replied, this rookie appreciates you at Scott Hansen. No apology necessary, my man. Life is too short to not have fun. We're officially on 70 yarder with watch and I'm going to spike my headset when it happens. So played with it back and forth. But again, quick, quick response. That was both... Tom responded before the eight o'clock Sunday night football game even started. So, what do we think? Do we think somebody put the call in, told Scott to to, to apologize? Do we think uh, he just felt the need to apologize? 
you know, what, what, what do we think about that? Ben, I, yes. I, I see you, you, you want to jump in on yeah, this. Song. Yeah, because that, that's the only part that I actually heard about the Cowboys <laughs> part. I was actually watching Red Zone and I, I heard that whole bit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, like the way he said it, it was definitely just tongue in cheek. He was like goofing around, saying, come on, you got to be more excited than that. Because, yeah, like it was it was going to be a big kick, you know, and he just said it just putting like it was like nothing important. <laughs> right. But um, I mean, yeah, I, I think it was probably Scott Hansen that just decided to do that just to because, you know, how the atmosphere is nowadays. Like if you say something critical of somebody, it's like, oh, automatically you hating you whatever hate. the case is. <laughs> And I, I, when I first heard it, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I thought it was just a funny thing and a throwaway. I didn't realize it became a thing. I didn't even know he apologized, <laughs> to be quite honest. But it, yeah, it was funny in the moment, and and I get it. Like, yeah, he was just so deadpan, kind of like. He, but I guess to Brady's so, um, not defense, but like to his point of view, probably he knew they probably were gonna take that because it was seventy yards. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I get it. And look, it's his first game. You know, mm -hmm. he it's not something he's accustomed to doing. So you got to cut the man a little bit of slack <laughs> there. Like, come on, like you can't expect him to be like ten years, three seventy five mil for for never doing it. Hey, look, whatever whatever they pay you, it, it, that's good on you, man. You got that money from them. So yeah, I, I can't hate the man for getting paid. <laughs> now, like. Could he do a better job? Sure, absolutely. He can get better at it. And again, it's just his first one. You know, just mm -hmm. relax. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And like, and like I said, I think I thought it was just just a joke. I didn't really take it serious. I didn't think it was like a dig at him or anything. But like <laughs> I said, I think Scott Hansen just took the initiative and was like, let me just make this a non-issue from go because otherwise people are gonna say, oh, he's hating on the man. Mm -hmm. which I didn't think that was the case. When I heard it, it was, it was just a funny throwaway line and mm -hmm. it just, they just moved on. He wasn't like dwelling on it or anything. Right. So, Because he did yeah. a job. I mean, and shout it, out to Scott yeah. Hanson. Like, not only is commentating a hard job to do for just one game, this dude is keeping you entertained from 1 o'clock to that game ends at, to the second half game ended at 7 o'clock. Yep. And he's switching between games. He's No bathroom break. No yep. bathroom break, as he always says. Like, that dude is is a different animal himself. Yeah, so yeah. if anybody can make a joke or even critique somebody, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let I, him. I definitely didn't see it as a critique though. Yeah. Like when I, like I said, when I heard it, I th it was just a funny line, and I just kept it moving, mm -hmm. and I just switched back to whatever the game I was watching. But yeah, nah, I, I, don't, I don't. I think people just want to make it a bigger deal than what it was. <laughs> what about you, Lou? Did, did you did you even see or hear? So I, I, I'm not even going to front. I listen to most of that Dallas game on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard, so you heard Tom Brady basically. I heard Tom Brady a little bit. <laughs> um, I mean, he 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 doesn't jump off the page. Like I, I go back to when they when the Troy Aikman and, and Jason Witten combo was way better, mm. way better. And the fact that they gave Jason Witten the, the boot and dumped him down to the B level game for Brady. Um, no, I, I think I think that's not it's not it's not Witten. I think it's um. The other guy from he was from Carolina. Damn, I'm blanking on his name right now. The tight end. Oh, um. Oh, Nelson. Uh. Ah, damn, I'm blanking on his name yeah, right Greg, now. Uh, Greg Olson. Sorry. Greg Olson. Greg yes. Olson. Greg Olson. Greg Olson. Yes. Olson. Not, not, mm -hmm. not Greg Olson. Yeah, they gave Olson the boot. Um, he was way better. Uh, and I think Scott Hanson probably got someone in his ear like, "You need to apologize." Fox is on the line. Um, the last thing Fox needs is Brady to take their money and, and disappear because. It, it's an ironclad contract. If he announces or if he doesn't, he gets his money. Last thing Fox need is is someone like in Scott Hansen's position who's been doing it for years at 10 times the level Tom Brady will ever do it at to be mm -hmm. like, you need to step your game up, partner. I'm like, this is the big leagues now. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's true. It's going to be a different animal for Brady. He's not going to come in here and dominate. Like, it, it, this is not his arena he doesn't have belichick to fall back on like it's a different beast um and the ratings will show the, the ratings will show at some point um i think the only thing he has going for him is fox is probably giving him high quality games to announce um you know he's not gonna have a giants commander's game you know he's not gonna have that <laughs> game um all in all you know I, I i think he has a lot of work to do um i'm very surprised that in the year he had off to prep for this. He wasn't getting it done. Like you, you need to put that time in the lab. You need to spend time with Troy Aikman. Um, he's lucky it's not Joe Buck up there, man. Because Joe Buck would have tore his ass apart. <laughs> like you, you worried about you know Scott Hansen? Joe Buck would have gave it to you right there in the booth. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, uh, he needs to do better. Uh, I, I don't think I'm gonna watch much games on on sound. <laughs> what about you, Jared? Did you did you hear any of, the, of uh, Brady's uh, first first game? Oh, we can't hear you, sir. Sounds like you're muted or something. I like Brady right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you gotta be a, more, a little more excited than that. <laughs> can you hear me now? You can, yeah, yeah. We can hear you a little bit now, yeah. Yeah, the Galaxy Buzz are trash. Probably it. <laughs> Shut up, Apple. Um, <laughs> nah, so I, I didn't really hear too much, but honestly, I think the much that I did hear was probably the highlight, maybe, because it wasn't much of anything. But the, it, it's, it's his first game, you know? Like, this is a new, it's a new venture for him. So I wasn't really expecting much out of him for his first, his first uh, announcing gig. You know, after you know being one of the best quarterbacks ever. Um, you know, Troy Aikman has done some stuff. You know, I mean, like it's a transition. Like anybody else, it's a transitional period. Like for some god awful reason, we still have Chris Collinsworth. You know, and that's after twenty years. You know, so it's, it's, it's give us just a slow start. Let him be. You know, if he's still awful by the end of year one and no progression, okay. Now we got to this up. But you know, I, if you get a critique, well, and if anybody and nobody's watched Red Zone, then you're not familiar with Scott Hansen and the way he talks and. You know, like he has like those quips, you know, like anything happens. It doesn't matter if it's an announcer or what, you know, he'll make a, a, a little quip, but it's not like it's like a dig at somebody and be like that. It's just, you know, the way he talks. So I, I, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it, you know, uh, as a, you know, in the wrong way. And, and Tom did it. And that's honestly the most important thing of it also, too. Tom didn't take it as harsh criticism or stuff like that. Um, he knows he probably needs to do better and not be, you know, nervous or whatever in that moment. Which is funny, you, you think, you know, the dude who's made Super Bowl winning passes, you know, wouldn't be nervous, but he's human. <laughs> this is not the normal. It's like, yeah, you know, all right, you've done something for so long. All right, try basketball now. I will, you're going to look like it. he's going to look silly, you know, like, so let him, you know, like he knows the plays and stuff like that. And I think that was a thing that Tony Romo. I think that's what people people expect him to be Tony Romo because he had that charisma, you know, and that stuff. I think that was the problem. People were expecting that, but people got to remember Romo's personality is not Tom Brady's personality. Like yeah. they know the game, but their personalities are a lot different, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Yeah, that, that's so what I was gonna was, say too. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Jerry. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's an unfair comparison to him, and that then like I said, I mean, Scott him saying that is not a problem. So it's Chris Hampton. Man, that's another problem. But <laughs> well, that's a whole other show. That's a whole other show. Wait, <laughs> well, yeah. good No, yeah, um, I was I was just gonna add. He's not the color commentator. He he's the analysis basically. So right. as long as he can break down the plays, you he's fine. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he could use more excitement in his voice, I guess. But like, I didn't hear the full broadcast, so I can't say for sure how 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 he was. But he's breaking down the place. That's really what it's supposed to be doing. So right, I, I didn't hear the whole thing either. Cause I didn't watch that game. Um, <laughs> but we can say that Brady got his first viral moment. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what you can ask for. That'll get people to you know people's attention. Um, but um, Lou, you spoke about um, hoping that someone didn't take the bags, get a lot of money, and just dip. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> somebody that. Uh, that might have got a lot of dimes um, in their bank account. Um, <laughs> your quarterback. You blame him for taking the money, though. <laughs> I don't blame I'm not him. blaming. I'm if just saying. Enough to give it. I'm not dumb enough to say no. <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not blaming. I'm just saying. Your quarterback. You know, Danny Dimes. He got a nickname. You know, say so he was doing some autograph signings. I think at a, at a pizza shop or something last year or something. No, he did like Tommy a. DeVito. Yeah, he did a meet and greet and things. He's out here, but um. So f first off, um, your your Giants uh celebrating their hundredth anniversary, and they wore their seventy fifth anniversary jerseys. Yeah. Why not wear the hundredth year? Okay, but um, 
If you if you watch the homie picks part one, maybe you heard me go off on my Giants a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it ain't gonna get any better. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. How, how do how do you feel about game one? Uh, I, I I called it. <laughs> you I, did. I you did call. I, I was trying to be optimistic. I was like, Sam Darnold. He, you guys can beat him. I, I, I wasn't. Sam wrong. Darnold like a pro bowler. Sam <laughs> no, Darnold. Man, he don't to look like Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> man, listen. Um, I was about the Giants, and um, I I spoken to multiple non-Giant fans because you know I I heard it all day Sunday. Like I got you guys. I got my other, my other my other friends, and um, I I said if this is what has to happen for the Knicks to win, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> so so the Knicks are throwing the Giants off the cliff like Thanos did to Gamora. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. It has to be done. Okay, it, it's inevitable. Um, definitely. <laughs> um, it, it's bad, man. It's bad. It it it. We Saquon was our offense. There was no hiding that. Mm -hmm. Saquon was our offense. You remove the heart and soul of that team, and you're left with a bunch of guys running around with a chicken, like a chicken with the head cut off. Um, it, it's going to be bad. I, I, I'm, I'm telling everybody, I don't see a win this year. I'm just surprised that it's, as you just said that, as obvious as that is, they did not bring back Saquon, and right. they paid Danny. Like, I don't get it. They that's, chose wrong. That's I mean, the GM, I, man. That's the yeah, GM. Joe, Joe Shane banked on, you know, Joe Shane banked on Dayball saying, hey, listen, I can do with Danny Dimes what I did with Josh Allen. No. Because <laughs> I will go back to say um, the Giants should have picked Josh Allen when they had the chance instead of Saquon. And mm -hmm. this would have been nullified. Mm -hmm. But they chose the quarterback, and I get it. You, you want you, – it's easier to replace – like they thought a running back that it is going to replace a, a, a all star, a caliber quarterback. Right. No, that's completely opposite. It mm -hmm. was easier to go out and get the quarterback this year than it was to go. To... Saquon only wanted 13 million. <laughs> Can we put that in perspective? He that's, only wanted 13 million. That's the shameful part because, like, you didn't replace a because he's a good, really good, um, let's say borderline great running back. With right. what they replace right. him with, <laughs> he got like three years, thirty six million. They replace him with like a B grade kind of running back. Mm -hmm. And then to make compound it, it's not like it was a big pay raise for him because you paid him twelve million last year. Mm -hmm. So your options were to set, to franchise him and make it happen. They couldn't even do that right. Um, <laughs> it's it, it's gonna be a bad season. I will say it again. I will not wear any Giants gear this entire season. Um, one of my friends texted me and was like, "Hey, how are we going to a Giants game?" I said it in, in brown paper bags. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I can think of that's appropriate for them right now. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it it, it it's sad because the Giants have never been this bad, even in their worst of worst. Um, every team is gonna be licking their chops to play the Giants. We if, might we if might Sam have Donald looked that good. A lot of quarterbacks. We might have a season that all their home games they will be the underdog. I can see um, that. Do, How do crazy the, is that to fathom? Do the Giants play uh, the Panthers this year? Yes, we do. Oh, uh, that's gonna be interesting now. <laughs> Ain't that the game that's in Germany? Uh, I believe so. I think yeah, that's, that's the Germany, Germany game. Yeah, man, that's gonna be interesting now. <laughs> Because if, if they make Bryce look like a pro bowler, wow. Man. Then then I'll definitely say, like, because I really thought at least the defense would step up a little bit because no, they, no, they right. made some acquisitions. But yeah, the problem but... is when you don't have sustainable drives, your defense is out there too long. Exactly. Mm -hmm. your, your defense is out there 40 minutes out of the game, and you, they, they win it. Yeah. You have the best defense in the world. They give me the 86 Bears. But if they're running up and down the field for 40 <laughs> minutes, they're going to they gonna get hurt. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't <laughs> expect a lot from my Giants this year. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of me changing the game in the second quarter. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> They're not gonna be in a lot of games. We mm -hmm. we know, and the schedule was brutal. We went through it, and I I saw L every step of the way. Mm. Yeah. So when um, when would you want to see them switch to Drew Lock? Yesterday. 
<laughs> it's not working. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah, you you can you can say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna march Danny Dimes out there till he falls apart. Guess what? At some point, Danny Dimes is gonna be like, ow, my knee hurts today. I don't want to practice. How how ow. much of his money is guaranteed? Sixty something mil. And how it, many more years left? So we can cut him after this year. Oh, okay. There goes the bright side. You got it. Yeah. That's the bright side. <laughs> yeah, but look look at the draft class this year going oh, into. Sh Shador Sanders at four. Maybe. Maybe. This wasn't the year to suck. The year to suck was last year. <laughs> <laughs> and the year after that, when Archie Manning comes out. <laughs> right. So maybe they, they're on buying the bright their side, turn. On the bright side, Arch. they might still they might still suck the next year. So you right. might still have a shot at Archie. Right. Okay. Okay. Raise your <laughs> hand if you have faith in the Giants uh, drafting. Uh, well, not with, with your current GM, no. <laughs> They go. need to they need to get rid of the GM for sure. I mean, yeah. do you know how bad it is when you unretire somebody's jersey who's been retired for 90 years? Yeah. That that was just weird to sell that was just to sell jerseys because this yeah. jersey. Hmm. Yeah. They chose them <laughs> colorful jerseys. They were unretired the jer yeah, no. Nah, a lot of a lot of bad decision making. Yeah. A lot of bad decision making. I don't want to beat the dead horse. I'm sorry, Lou. We suck. Move on. <laughs> um <laughs> But again, like you, like you alluded to, you know, check out homie picks. Um, every week, these guys will be picking, you know, um, you know, five games. Um, you can check out 2020vision.com slash picks to see their picks, their rankings, where they stand. Um, I'll be updating it as soon as I can, depending on circumstance of the game, how late the games are. But out of the five games you guys picked last week, there was only one home team that did not win and that was ben's colts hey yeah 29 to 27. i you know that's what i said like we we have that 10-year streak going so <laughs> that um it was it was a disappointing loss for sure because we could have done a little bit better there was some some plays that could have been better but our defense just got killed the running game, like Joe Mixon looked like he was a, a fresh young rookie out there, fresh legs running over everybody. Like that was vintage Joe Mixon. Like I did not expect to see that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we for some reason we we stayed away from the run. Um, maybe the defense from the Houston was playing the run well, but we didn't really run Taylor that much. But it's still a close game. Um, Anthony Richardson has his highlights. Um, like some ridiculous throws. I, I think he ended up with like 200 plus yards at two touchdowns with only like 12 completions, mm -hmm. which is insane. <laughs> um, so there, there's, there's bright side to that. But then I heard today that we lost one of our young corners, which mm. is our best corner. He's going to mm. be out for the year. And that's one of our weakest, um, groups on the defense so that's a little bit alarming so the defense really got to step up like because that that was a horrible performance by the defense if the defense just would have stopped the run like keep it let's say 200 yards it we might have had a chance um because mm -hmm. we did drop some balls that could have been intercepted um one got called back on a flag so we had chances we, we just blew it again um but um but I did like how they played. Like the offense looked the, better than what Minshew can do. You know, at least we got some throws down the field this time around, some explosive plays. But uh, we just need a little more consistency out of um, Anthony Richardson. But you know, the man he really hasn't played a ton of games, like college, high school, or anything. I think he's has like maybe eighteen, nineteen games at most. Mm -hmm. so it's not a lot so he doesn't have a lot of the reps so hopefully with more reps he'll clean up some of the stuff um get a little bit more touch on some of his passes because some that man throws like a bullet <laughs> that I was man gonna say, he a had bullet. A, he had a highlight he that that deep bomb he had a couple of highlights man. yeah yeah he had that it was like a 70 misses. yard yeah that that's the thing there's a couple of misses mm -hmm. and also uh, during the game a lot of the people were slipping the new turf that they put down yeah so defensive people were slipping, our guys were slipping. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully they figure that part out. But yeah, I mean it's it's promising. Like he made some throws that you like, wow, like mm -hmm. there's only a handful of quarterbacks that can make that kind of throw. 
like you said, that bomb, 70-yard bomb touchdown. Mm -hmm. Then there was another one for like 59. And then there mm -hmm. was another one that was a crosser and, and they ran it in for a touch. Like the window was super tight and he snuck it in there. So he, he, he has the arm talent. He just needs to get more reps, get a little bit more better with some touch here and there and definitely some communication because um, we're playing a rookie right now because um, Josh Downs is hurt. So our slot, our usual slot guy is not in. So the communication is not really there. So there was a couple of uh, miscommunications that they could have hooked up a little bit better. But overall, very optimistic on the offensive side. But now defensive side <laughs> with that injury, it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm I'm afraid to see what Malik Willis does to us with Green Bay next week. <laughs> so after one week, how do you feel? You confident in 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 Richardson and the season? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I I feel like they can they can sneak into a wild card kind mm -hmm. of game in there um in the division. Um, Jaguars lost, so we still the only undefeated team in our division is the Texans. Mm. So. Tennessee looked like trash. Will Levis was throwing the ball to the wrong teams, doing mm -hmm. some weird throws. Like he was sacked and he was just throwing, chucking the ball for anybody to grab. <laughs> so he made some weird decisions. So that's that's the thing that's encouraging about AR is that he does do the right, he does do get the right read. He does make the right throw. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's offline or he just puts too much on it. Mm. But um at the end of the day, he's it's basically like his rookie year so it's gonna be some growing pains but right. the but the big plays are there definitely for sure like there's a lot of wow in him um if we can get the run game going a little bit better next game and the defense just plays a slightly better I mean I was never a fan of the Gus Bradley hiring and I'm still not a fan of it I just, he just plays that old style zone Tampa two kind Tampa of defense <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, he, they just get burned, and they get burned consistently. And particularly with a good quarterback like CJ, like he just found the soft spots every time. We couldn't get them off the field on third downs. It was just ridiculous. So yeah, they really got to shore up the defense. Like the pressure was okay. We got a couple of sacks, but they just let these dumb plays happen on the pass on third and longs and whatnot. Ooh. Kept them on the field and then we just could not stop the run. Like it was just horrible, horrible. Right. But other than that, optimistic. Optimistic. You still playoff team? I think they could make a playoff. Okay. Uh, cause because I wasn't too impressed with the Jaguars. I thought they would be they would play better. Um they had the lead with Miami and then they just blew it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they just like the Jaguars just find a way to lose sometimes. Yes. So, <laughs> I, I so, think their quarterback. I think Tre Tre Trevor Lawrence is like overrated. He has the look of a prototypical, yeah. stereotypical quarterback, but he doesn't put the numbers up. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, that, don't get me wrong. He does have. He does make some good plays here and there. But like I've, again, they just make some weird calls. Like I, I believe they they went for it on fourth and two on their own 30 and they had the lead instead of punting it. Like, why would right. you do that? Like, just punt the ball, like keep the lead. It's stupid things like that. So mm -hmm. that, I'm very optimistic. It gives us a chance to, you okay. know, sneak into a wild card. So we definitely, you know, to, again, tune into homie picks because obviously it's going to be a journey between the picks that these guys make and their own teams. Yeah. Cause my picks were trash this week. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you went two for three. Um, <clears throat> Jared and Lou both went four, four and one. Um, obviously Lou, you, you should have picked the Niners or it should have been perfect. Ha ha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Jared, your only loss was also you picking your team. Ha ha. And, uh, you, 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 you lost by a tippy toe. Um, a Durant. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was gonna say your I'll, other team I'll, I'll has I'll, a little. I'll say, yeah, I know. I have a history that. with that. So I was gonna say all my teams have so we we have so <laughs> big feet, man. <laughs> you know, you got to get players with smaller feet. <laughs> but um, first so so first off, Jared, tell me how you feel about that game. Again, uh, Lou has no no, no 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 faith in his team. He he don't that it, he expected that it is what it is. Ben took the loss, but still has faith. Still sees optimistic in his team. You your team, unfortunately, the Ravens had to open the season against the defending champs at their stadium. They got their rings. They got to raise their banner and you know Taylor Swift was there. 
But how do you feel about the game and your team's future for the season? We're going on 16, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow. All right, <laughs> moving on. Uh- <laughs> nah, I'll play it. Look, it's the team. My Ravens should have won. Period. Plan and period. It, we should have won. It just didn't happen. Like, we had more total yards. You know, the only thing that the only thing, the only real thing that the Chiefs did more than the Ravens, other than score more, I was gonna say, was, score more points, <laughs> score more points, was, was, was passing. We outran them, we had more first downs, we, we didn't punt as much, so we didn't re really throw interception. Like, if you look at numbers, and that's why I don't like numbers as the only barometer for stuff. You look at the numbers, Ravens dominated that game. You also have more flags. Mm. You also have more flags too. That's, that's another problem. So don't do it took you backwards. Know, and we and we also had a fumble. But you know, the to look at numbers clearly, you would say, Oh, well, how did the Ravens lose that? And I and the answer is toes. But <laughs> you know, other than that, you know, it's it is what it is. You know, it's another loss against the Chiefs. Like I'm I'm very much think we're gonna be in it. You know, until we have to go against the Chiefs. That's just, just, just the Chiefs is just the Chiefs, man. It's just what it is. Like I will always have high hope in my team. I think we're going to be a great team until we go against the damn Chiefs. And then everything just happens. You get you got Chiefs. You know, like how you know how 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 the 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 uh, the, the other network you know has that you got bossed. <laughs> you know, everybody else is, you got chief. You got so. chief. <laughs> you got well, chief. I can relate. I can relate. Two Super Bowls in the last five years. We've been chiefed. But we've all been cheated by the referees who are the 11th man, 12th man, well, 12th man, 13th man, 14th oh, man on the field helping them out. But do you feel that the, that that, um, that played a part in this game? So, you know, it is what it is. No, I think. You know, also, I have good hope in my team going forward. You know, I think Lamar, I love Lamar to death, but he, he can't be 100. He, he, I mean, I love the fact that he can throw for 200, run for 100, but not when you got other runners on that team that are very capable, you know. Like, and, and, and that brings me to my next question. Um, how do you feel about the Derrick Henry move? Oh, you know, with, with Derrick Henry, I think he's going to be, like, he's getting older. So you're not going to try to, you're not going to try to, like, let him be the workhorse that whole time. I get it. You know, let him, I would rather, like, you know, let him get his legs in. And then when the season gets, you know, you know, everybody else gets tired and season gets longer. If Derrick Henry's fresh, then that's a great Chico right there. Um, Because he still has, He's, he's, he's still going to have a size advantage on most or be on par with most linebackers and anybody else that's on defense. So I, I think if you have a fresh Henry against, you know, a more tight defense, that's going to look a great, that's going to be a great thing. So, um, you know, we just keep, you know, we just, just keep grinding. Thank God we don't got to play the Chiefs again this season, <laughs> you know, for the playoffs. Hopefully, hopefully the, the players, you know, we actually beat them. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I got good faith, you know, like it's still going to be a, a wide receiver heavy, you know, focused offense, you know, this time was Isaiah likely and the ain't time else is going to be Mark Andrews or, you know, that's just our, that's just our MO. Even if we have good, really good wide receivers, um, you know, we're still going to be going towards wideouts, and honestly, maybe it's just because of the schemes that we 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 draw up. We always seem to find disadvantages against, you know, whoever the wideout, whoever the tight ends are going against. But um, defensively, I'm not I'm not mad at anything my team is doing right now. Offensively, you know, it's, you know, it's it's, it's it's a new season, new new coordinator. We'll be all right. Okay, that's just it. we'll be all right. One question to the panel, um, because one of the biggest storylines for this season is can the Chiefs three-peat? So it's been a while since the team has done that. We spoke about Tom Brady earlier. Um, he he didn't even do it. He didn't even get a chance to three-peat, I don't think. Um, I, what, was the last, what was the last three-peat? Was it ever done? Before we were born. Cowboys? <laughs> the Steelers, maybe? Like, Cowboys? No, I, don't know. I think it's... 
It might have been like uh, in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, because yeah, yeah. the NBA, you know, the Bulls did it, Lakers did it. You know, but yeah, I don't. I don't know, but, not sure. Yeah, yeah but do we, do we think you know that the Chiefs now have a chance to do it? Do we think this is the year that the Chiefs three peat? Zero. Zero no chance. Zero. Oh, Man. you want to know the last team to won the three peat? Who? In 1965 to 67, Green Bay Packers. The Packers. Yes. Well, but technically, because I think the first one was in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that so was the first year, the first, the first two year, the first two was just like a title game. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then, so, and then, so and then, technically, and two. there's yeah. never been a three peat so, in the maybe. Super Bowl era. So, so do we do we see the Chiefs doing it? No, Lou said no. Ben, uh, I think they have a shot. They have. But is a that shot. a yes or a no, sir? I would say yes because I believe I picked them for two in the Super Bowl already. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Jared, what you got? Do you do you see the Chiefs three peating? Come on, Ravens. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's not an answer, sir. Yes. But yes, I, I see them. I see them repeating. You see them the repeating? Okay. The, the, the NFL wants them to be the go to state where it's so damn bad. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Let it game on, boy. I do not see them repeating. Um, I, I, I think they looked a little shaky against the Ravens. Um, I think they get a lot of help. Said that already. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, damn zebras. Yeah. And I think. I, I think it's very it's gonna be very tough. It's a long grueling season. I think it's gonna be hard for them to do it. I think if they do, it's it, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be marketable for the NFL, but it's gonna it, it's gonna take a lot of 12th, 13th, 14th man help for them to to <laughs> to, to do it again. Um, they this, look shaky last year, and they still won. So that that is true. But again, because they got the 12th, 13th, and 14th man on the field. That's last year they don't win. So, but I, I, I think it's, I don't think it's going to happen again. I'm, I'm against it. I'm not just saying my Niners will do it, but I'm just, I just one, I don't want to see them, and I don't think they will. I don't think they will. And well, well, since we have you here, what is your Super Bowl pick? <clears throat> so, Ben, to answer your question. Matter of fact, let me let me pull up uh, you guys' uh, clip real quick. Hold on, hold on. You had the, the odds and things on the Super Bowl pick. So everybody tuning in, you know, check out week one episode of Homie Picks. Uh, they discussed their Super Bowl picks, and they had the odds. So the Chiefs were favorited to, to win at plus 550. 49ers was plus 600. Ravens plus 1,100. Lions plus 1,200, Eagles plus 1,300, Texans plus 1,500. Um, however, I think since then, the 49ers are now the favorites. Um, are they? You guys can check. Maybe I'm bugging or maybe, you know, I just think we are the favorite team. But I think I heard someone say that after week one's games, the odds makers in Vegas have uh, restructured. Hold on, pull it up right here. Nope, we're not. No, nope, no. Nope. It's Kansas City still Kansas number City's one. Still number one. So they're now San Francisco plus... second. Yeah. Yep. The Lions have come up. Yeah, Detroit's third. The Eagles have come up. The Ravens have dropped. Sorry, Jared. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so Chiefs are still favorited. Niners are still favorited in the NFC side. Um, but then it's it's. The Chiefs in the AFC, then it's three straight NFC teams, and then the Ravens. So, NFC heavy, Niners, Ravens, Eagles. I think the, the to me, the Eagles are overrated still. I think they were expo exposed last year um, by us. Um, uh, they lost uh, uh, Jason Kelsey. Um, the tush push ain't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, Jalen Hurts ain't what he used to be. Um, so I'm not, I'm not worried about the Eagles. Um, the Lions do scare me. Um, and we didn't talk about that game, but they did beat the Rams, who are our, our division rivals. So I was watching that game very closely um, because we will have to deal with both of those teams. But yes, the the Lions scare me. Um, I believe I was on an episode of um, Homie Picks about two years ago when I told people back then to look out for the Lions. Um, they missed the playoffs that year, but like by one game, and here they are. Um, I I am still skeptical about my team. Um, 
I think if it's not the Niners coming from the NFC, it can very well be Detroit. Um, I don't see any other team on the NFC side making a push. Um, Green Bay is out of it because Love is now hurt. It's not a season-ending injury, but it is a very severe injury that's going to make him miss a significant amount of time, and they may not win a game during that time frame. Um, the Rams, um, they had to deal with us. Um, who else is really a threat in the NFC? Um, Cowboys, ha. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the Giants are not? What, the Giants are not a threat? Yeah, they're a threat to my eyes and they keep wearing them colorful uniforms. <laughs> um, <laughs> Danny Dimes is a threat to everyone because you never know where that ball is going to go. So everybody got to be on the lookout when he's throwing the pass. But I, I, I am confident in my Niners to maybe repeat um, if we can stay healthy um, and, we're, and we can speak on uh, the game, the Monday night football game between the 49ers and the Green Bay Packers. That was the 49ers um, with a rusty Brandon Ayuk, with a rusty Trent Williams, um, with no Christian McCaffrey, um, <clears throat> new pieces on the offensive line, uh, new pieces on the defensive line, um, still figuring it out, um, putting up 30 points against a highly touted uh, New York Jets defense. Overrated. Um, coached by our old defensive coordinator who knows us very well um which we also know him very well too so the, you know the defensive schemes was, was 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 predictable um i am comfortable that if 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 brandon Ayuk and trent williams for that matter because he did leave the game needing some iv needing some electrolytes and things because he didn't go to training camp if Ayuk and Trent were in training camp, they would have been in better shape, and we probably put up 50 on the Jets. Um, Brandon Ayuk obviously dropped a big dime, no pun intended, Lou, in the end zone to Brandon Ayuk that he dropped, and he dropped another yeah. pass as well. Cost me a bet there, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I think if he's in better shape and in game shape, um, he catches that, and the game isn't even as close as it ended up being. Um, I think Tyrod Taylor comes in much sooner. Um, I think we're getting Talano Hafunga back sometime um, soon. Um, Ricky Pearsall, our rookie receiver who got shot in the chest like two weeks ago, is ready to play, and I think he needs to relax. He's bugging. Um, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> don't know what to expect from him, but I, I think we're going to get, and we're going to get big play Dre Greenlaw back at some point as well. Um, it, getting those guys back is like making midseason trades. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can see us making a run, and, and also with that game, with um, Jordan Mason um, stepping up and shining, I th hope and think that Kyle Shanahan can now trust in using another running back besides Christian McCaffrey, when Christian McCaffrey comes back, not using Debo as much in the run, because they now kind of want to use him in that kickoff, um, you know, new, new kickoff format as well. Um, but not having to worry about him running as much. We have two strong backs and we used Kyle Juszczyk last night. He had, he was wide open on one wheel route that we, that, that. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. He when one. they missed him. Yeah, he, right. So, you know, we could use him more frequently as well because now we kind of trust the offensive line a little bit more. We got a rookie, um, uh, Papuni, who's pretty good on that right-hand side. We still got Colt McKivitz to his right, as the right tackle, he sucks. But we got a right guard who kind of can hold down that right side. Trent's going to get in better shape than what he was, but he still didn't allow no pressures on his side. So he just ran out of, ran out of gas a little bit, it, as old as he is and how big he is. I'm very confident in my team, um, more confident than I was before seeing him in week one. Um, and like I said, I'm really hoping when, when those players come back and finally get into shape, it'll be during that late end of the season playoff run and I'm really only worried about the Detroit Lions at this point and if we can end up a home field advantage I think we're back in the Super Bowl and unfortunately I think we're probably playing the Kansas City Chiefs again however it would be poetic justice which might be a song that Kendrick does during the halftime show that we we be the ones to stop the three-peat 
I would love it. So you're picking dream. the Niners. It's my pick. <laughs> 49ers over the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. We stop the three P. We stop our three Super Bowl losing streak. We get back on top. We get our sixth ring to tie with the Steelers. What up, Uncle Pete? Um, one behind, obviously, Tom Brady, who did it six with the, with the Patriots, but we'll be tied with six for the, you know, I, I, that, speaking into existence, that's what's going to happen. We're going to finally overcome the 12th, 13th, and 14th men on the field. We're going to make the Chiefs change their name because they've been only waiting because they've been winning and still selling merchandise. But they, you know, the, the Cleveland Indians and the Cleveland Guardians, the, the Washington Redskins and now the Washington Commanders, like we're going to change the Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs will no longer be the Kansas City Chiefs. They'll be the Kansas City Swifts. <laughs> <laughs> All because of the 49ers. That's my pick. All right. And to that game, like I said, Jordan Mason looked great. Brock looked a little shaky. He made he missed a few, but he also hit a few that looked great. So he, you know, he's still getting comfortable back there. New offensive line. They're still working things out. Um, but like I said, if, if we were in game shape, we 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 put up forty at least forty something against that Jets defense. And I think they're still a pretty good defense. I think you you said overrated. I think they're still no no the Jets defense is overrated. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Jets, that's what I'm saying. We, we, I think we we put up a lot of points on that Jets defense. I th I don't think they're overrated. I think they are. I think they're still very good. Um, they're I, good, I, but they're not as good as people make them sound like this lockdown yeah. defense. They, they that's not them. Right, and, and and I think they thought that the defense was going to be so great that Aaron would be the missing piece, and I I don't think it's that. But I do think they're a very good defense for us to put up the amount of points we the, the, My issue with, with, with Monday night's game was we settled for too many field goals. Um, shout, out, but shout out to Jake Moody, our second year kicker, getting a lot of practice in. Uh, <laughs> so he went six for six. Um, so he's already our leading scorer. And um, he needs to practice. He needs to get comfortable because um, we're going to need that in, in the playoffs and later games. So I'm comfortable, I'm confident, more confident in the team. Biggest issue, of course, biggest hindrance to what we do is still injuries. Um, but with that defensive line, you know, Nick is still there. We lost Eric Armstead, but we added, we still had, you know, Javon Hargrave. We added Leonard Floyd, who was the one that took out Brett, uh, Brett, Aaron Rodgers last year. So ironically, he saw him again this year. It was like, ha ha, remember me? Um, <laughs> he didn't take him out this year, but we beat him. Um, I'm confident. I'm confident in that. In, in, in Chiefs, Niners again, Niners winning, Kendrick halftime show, 49ers winning, my favorite Super Bowl of all time. <laughs> I'm with it's it. Not, it's, I mean, it's, it's plausible. <laughs> so, 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 Paul, so you're saying, so you're saying uh, the base will be his last stop? Who's last stop? You remember Kendrick Lyon? You got to work in the, the time with these jokes, man. That doesn't fit, man. That don't fit. <laughs> he said that to Drake because he said L.A. That, no, that New Orleans, that doesn't fit, man. That doesn't fit. <laughs> but we will win in New Orleans. Um, you guys, let me ask you guys, what did you think about Aaron Rodgers' return after missing a, a, a little over, well, missing a year? How would you think about that? What did he look like to you? He looked good. I mean, uh, it would it would have been – better if his defense can get off the goddamn field and let him be on the field for more than like 15 minutes in a, in a four quarter game um it, i think I, I i said this this morning i think that loss was great for the jets because now you know okay if we would have stepped up as a defense and got our asses off this field three or four times more than what we did Aaron would have more to work with um I think they need more help, though. I think they're gonna have to go out there and get a wide out. Um, but Aaron, look, he looked good, man. He got the, he got you guys on that, on that, on that uh, offsides for that free play. We looked very good. Um, yeah, he just needs to get on the field and more help. <laughs> I st I still don't know how we let um, Lazar just run by us. Like I never understand why people freeze 
when they see that flag happen, like they just stop and somebody just run. like it happens every time. Yep. And but, and, but that's the them, advantage. Like Lazard knows that play. Yeah, he right. He, knows he played he with going. him in Green Bay. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's why it's so important to have guys he knows on the team. Everyone mm-hmm. says, "Well, why are you bringing his guys?" Well, for reasons like this, because Lazard was the only one still running. Right. Right. And 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 it's like every single time. Um, but to your point, I think I, I don't think offensively they need more. I think they have to make a, a decision about Hassan Reddick. Uh, oh, he got paid. He yeah, paid. clearly our game plan was to run against them. Yep. It wasn't even a throw against them. Um, we did fear their corners a little bit, specifically Sauce Gardner. Um, but the game plan was, as it is most of the time for the Niners, we, we were planning on running against them, and it worked. Um, yeah. What you call it? Um, Jordan Mason had about 140-something yards. Um, he ran it about 20-something times. Uh, Debo ran it about eight times. Yeah. Uh, we we were planning on running, and that's how we kill. And that's how that's how we we ate up so much clock. Listen, so if the Jets I, I don't have think they another... need offensive pieces. I think um, they have a very good offensive receiver core for Aaron um, and a running back, Brees Hall. Uh, we we shut him down, so that wasn't an issue for us either. But I think for them offensively, they're fine. I think they have to get Reddick back and and clean up some stuff on defense yeah see I, I didn't see it that way <laughs> I, I I watched Aaron play I I think he was average he wasn't mm. great he wasn't he looks like a 40 year old that came off Achilles heels injury like he couldn't move he the the defensive I mean defensive the offensive play calling was horrible mm-hmm. most of the passes were to the left and to the left, it was yeah, so um, they were very predictable. There was nothing like they, I, don't, I didn't like their schemes at all. Like, and I think that's Hackett's thing. Like, I know he he brought him over, but he's not helping him. Like, they need to do some motions in there. They don't do none of that stuff. I know Aaron doesn't like that much because he didn't, that's why he didn't like the floor because he did a lot of motions and stuff. But you gotta you gotta grow with the times like it's you need those kinds of motions you need to um, move the defensive pieces around and I didn't see that I didn't see a dynamic offense from the Jets to be quite frank yeah that that touchdown to the start yeah but it was of a flag you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying it wasn't like nothing great I think he had probably had like one decent drive sustainable drive but other than that like if you move him off off the off the, out of the pocket it, it's mm-hmm. it's a wrap like and they only have Hall to throw. I mean, um, Garrett Wilson as a receiver and Hall as a, as the back, and that's pretty much it as far as the offensive weapons go because nobody else is really reliable there. So, to me, it looked like Aaron Rodgers back in Green Bay, his last game, like barely touching two hundred yards, like, and a lot of eye rolling, a lot of like, oh, they dropped the pass again. He gets just frustrated, like. Yeah, I I not that confident in the offense for the Jets. To be quite frank, I I think they're gonna depend a lot again on the defense. He's better than Zach Wilson, but that's not saying much. You know what I'm you know. Well, so how much how much do you attribute to him only getting a hundred something yards to the to the Forty Nineers defense, or how much of that was him? I, I, no, don't get me wrong. The defense played well, but it's not. It's not just him. Like I said, it's the play calling that they mm-hmm. have. It's very predictable play calling that they do. Like I said, like I think it was, I think I saw the stat, but it was like, uh, like eighty percent was thrown to the left side. Yeah. Like you become so predictable, the defense is gonna catch up, mm-hmm. and they're gonna know exactly what you're gonna do. So they just, they just don't create good schemes. So like they're not helping themselves. Maybe if they. If Hackett was better, they tried to replace Hackett, but they couldn't do it. They they didn't find anybody that wanted the job. <laughs> Can't blame them. But uh, so they're stuck with Hackett. His play calling is horrible. I feel like, and and it's just that is Aaron's friend. He likes them. They're buddies, right. and he kept them around. But quite frankly, he's not up to par with what the league is now. Like mm-hmm. it was a very predictable offense. Like. You can, and at, after 
a couple of plays in, you saw the Niners were adjusting. They were like, okay, this guy's just throwing it here. Mm-hmm. You got tip balls, you got the interception. Yeah, I, I'm not confident with with Hackett. The the schemes that they're running, I don't think helps them at all. They might be able to be below average teams for sure. Right. But when it's a quality team like the Niners or any other team in the NFC, mm-mm. I don't, I don't see it, uh, particularly in the AFC. I mean, in their own division, they got to face Allen. They got to face Tua, even though Tua is not the greatest, but he still puts up yards and they still put up points. Mm-hmm. And I, I I don't see them winning any type of shootouts. It has to be a defensive battle, low scoring game kind of deal. Otherwise, I think they're going to be burnt. Jared, the defense, your... is, the defense is going to get tired. The defense yeah. is going to get tired. Jared, what's your thoughts on uh, the return of Aaron Rodgers? Um, for me, you know, he, um, he, um, one of the same points that Ben has, but I have more faith, though. Um, I think, I think I have a, a little bit more faith. Like, I think it's the first game. I think that's just what it is, period. Um, you know, it's been a year. Aaron Rodgers is in full effect, which is grumpy old man stage, you know, um, at times, you know, the whole chemistry that would have probably been by now is not there. You know, there was a whole year off there. Um, it's a lot of time to make up for that. Um, it's only game one. I think, yes, the play calling was predictable. Yes, you know, the, and, and maybe it's just because they're trying to simplify things and so people catch up to speed. I don't know. But um, it's a hell of a contest to go against the Niners in your first game. And like I've always said, I mean, like I said, and you said something different, I, I say Aaron Rodgers against the Niners, usually the Niners are going to kind of have their thing against them. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's we'll see what happens in the week two. Uh, more practices when the game is real, you know, it's not, you know, to still Allen Iverson's line, we told, you know, like back then it was practice, not the real game. Now we're in the real game. Mm-hmm. So let it play out some more. I'll say by week six, we'll see what the Jets are by that point. Um, so then it's just, you know, it's not like anybody was really betting. I mean, I hope nobody was betting the house of the Jets anyway. They are. <laughs> some people bet them to go to the Super Bowl. Well, <laughs> there were some people. Congrats. Congrats yeah. to those suckers, but <laughs> yeah. congrats to those suckers. But you know, at the same time, um, I think it would have been a smarter bet not to do that, only because you got to at least see this. You got to see one year out. Like you got to, they just have they have weapons, they have horses there. But you know, I can see, I can see the Jets. I mean, I I can see the Jets going nine and eight. You know. Because the yeah. the Bills didn't uh, look that great against the Cardinals. They still came back and won. But it was the Cardinals. I, I get that, but... <laughs> it's the Cardinals. Look, right, but you have to think about it. Like, who are the better quarterbacks in that division for the AFC right there on them? So, it's Aaron Rodgers, Tua, um, what's the Jacoby Brissett. But Kyler and, and, Murray... Looked great against them. The defense wasn't Tyler playing Murray. great. Yeah, right. coming off didn't play injury. Great. The defense uh-huh. wasn't playing great for sure, but like Allen kept them in the game and won that game. So you, you're gonna have to face them twice. I don't see them. I don't see the Jets beating the Bills if they if, if at least Allen is competent and the defense manages to get it right itself a little bit. It's it, I can see them winning seven to eight games, but I don't see them making the playoffs. Mm. Okay, I see them making the playoffs. Like I, I guess I see them getting, I, I see them getting it together a little bit better, making the playoffs. Um, I don't see them making a dent, but I see them making the playoffs. No playoffs. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna stand by that. No playoffs for the Jets. Oh, no. Didn't the Jets beat the Bills last year opening night? They did. They did once. Yes. Was that opening night? Rodgers? Opening night. Again, week, week, but week one is always a, a free for all. 
you never know what happens on week one. So, but we can't take what the Jets did week one as with a grain of salt. That's what I'm True, saying. but you could you could say that. Yes, you could say that for sure. But you could say that now. But <laughs> and the Bills were it. struggling against the Cardinals. <laughs> Nobody has faith in the Cardinals. Everyone was surprised. The Cardinals were up big for yeah, a lot of that game. The Bills had to come back, and and um, um, Allen had to put his body on the line. He can't keep doing that. He's that's putting true. himself at risk. If he starts missing games, it's a wrap for them. So that's going to wear down on him, especially if his receiving core, because that was the biggest thing. His receiving core wasn't really holding him down, and he had to do it. How long can he? That's the same question we always have for, for Lamar. Like, how? And, and, and Lamar is smart enough to get out of bounds. Right. Josh is trying to go shoulder to shoulder with people. Like, yep. he's trying to truck linebackers. That's gonna yeah. start to add up, like so. Yeah, I I still have more faith in those quarterbacks than Aaron Rodgers, to be quite frank. It's just I uh, I did not see anything. Like I said, he looks just like an average quarterback. Like, which it, nothing is special. the league now. It's a lot of average right. quarterbacks. Like, <laughs> right? But in 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 that division right now, you have to get through the Bills. You have to get through Tua. Like, even though Tua is not elite by any chance, but they do put up points. So I just I do not see them coming out of the AFC there. I just I, I it's very hard for me to envision them getting any more any better. Again, it's just because the play calling that they have is just so extremely predictable. Like a couple but I of think the talent they're gonna have there. to I think the talent is there on the Mike offense, Williams, Wilson. Bruce. Williams is always hurt though. Fine, but he never plays. <laughs> he didn't use him this week. He took a week off, so he's available now. Week two, if you we'll change see. the schemes up, he can do more. I don't know. I don't trust that either. He, he that guy is never available. Maybe he's available for a week or two, and that's about it. Hey, that's what so happened in the Chargers. That's why they let him go. Because uh, yeah, the, Dolph the Dolphins didn't look that great against the Jaguars. No, they didn't. Either. They didn't, but they came back and won that one. They Again, were using these comebacks. They, they struggled. Back. <laughs> they didn't yeah, look good. They, Tua didn't look good. Like, but they didn't... found a way to win, right? They found a way yeah. to win. And I but... think, I think, um, against lesser defenses. That's what I said. Like Aaron I said, can find a way to beat these teams. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The Jaguar. I mean, the, against yeah, the, average the teams, don't have the Niners' win. defense. The Bills right. don't have the Niners' defense. Right. Like, like I, said, I remember, average teams still beat average teams. The I Dolphins' defense is average. Did they played well. They well did. Enough. They only put up twenty points. They played they play, well enough. They played <laughs> the Texans to beat the Jaguars. Yeah, they played the Texans, the Patriots, the Broncos, and the Vikings next. Well, the next big it? defensive test is the Steelers, October twentieth. Because no, the Texans, the, the, the Patriots' defense was pretty good this weekend. So the defense is still good. The offense is still questionable, but the defense is there. And who's the other Texans? CJ. I I think they'll. Probably get shredded with by him. Right. No, they don't play the, t the Titans. Oh, the Titans are not that. That's yeah. possible. That's a win. That's a win. Right <laughs> That's a <laughs> win. Broncos. <sighs> Broncos. The defense is still pretty good in the Broncos, but yeah, Bo Nix still is a rookie. So they play hard. the Bills, and then the next, the real test is against the Steelers with TJ Watt, and that's like a month away. The defense, yeah. I, like I said, they're going to struggle against and by then, better teams. Aaron's going to get his timing down. He, right, he likes to get rid of the ball quick. You don't get sacks on Aaron a lot. No, he got rid of the ball quickly enough. That wasn't. And we it. only got one sack. <laughs> it was, I, I yeah. think it was Leonard Floyd. That, no, I think it was Hargrave that got him. But that's I what think I'm saying. you guys are very optimistic quick. on the man. So, T.J. Watt, Nick Bosa, like those guys don't get their numbers on Aaron Rodgers because he gets rid of that ball quick. So they can they can cancel out. But I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on that. I don't want to dwell on that. Niners championship. Just speak it. Speed it to its existence. Lions. You know, I'm here for it. I'm, I might have to fly out to San Francisco to you know be at the parade. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> Lions look. versus Texans. No, 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 no. We we gonna we gonna beat the Texans. You got the Texans <laughs> coming out the AFC? Yep. All right, all right, all right. A lot of faith yeah. in young CJ. I'll still stick with my Rams pick. Because okay. even though they lost two of their, their offensive yeah, linemen, they lost Puka. Yeah. And, and, yeah, they were playing backups on the offensive line. They still kept it close with the Lions. 
So they just they just ran out of gas in the overtime, so they couldn't stop that last run. But and to credit to Detroit, their defense is ferocious. Their defense gets at them. So, but even with that, Stafford put up numbers. So I I I still have faith in the in the Rams making it out of the NFC. So we shall She's still see. Winning it. All all we know for for sure is the Giants are going nowhere. Um, First pick and, in the draft, baby. Oh, okay. But but who you picking? <laughs> we gonna I'm trade not... it. We are gonna trade it. <laughs> For Saquon. Oh man. Bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of comeback, like, what do we think about Ezekiel Elliott and the Cowboys? It's the Cowboys. The Cowboys are always great the regular season. There's no doubt about it. It's but the Zeke, playoffs. Zeke went back to be the backup. Like that's <laughs> the crazy. thing that that's, well, he that's did start. Fluke. He did start in the backfield this week. Well, he started, but I think yeah. he, he didn't have most of the carries. I think he got that. That, that, won't, that won't be sustainable with Zeke. They have to give him some rest. It's the Cowboys. Complain it's, or cry about it. They'll they'll find a way to win one game miraculously, and then they'll find a way to lose two equally as bad. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I just don't trust them in the playoffs. I'm, I'm, that's the Cowboys thing. They make it to the playoffs, and they usually end up one first round the exit. So mm -hmm. that's. So I'm not surprised that they won. Um, but I mean they that's just what they do. They're good in the regular season, they're the champions of regular season, they right. put up good numbers. <laughs> but come January, that's when they fail. And Dak Dak got paid. What do we think about Dak's contract? That's yeah. gonna hurt them in the long run. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, they paid Dak, they paid CD Lamb. They gotta pay Micah now. Right. They're not getting paid. He's going to get paid because that's what else. the Cowboys do. <laughs> but then they, they're going to lose another running back, another receiver. And, I'm not getting paid. I and then they're going to rely on Dak more and it, it, the wheels might fall apart. But <laughs> that's just the, the Cowboy way. Yeah. But the season is just beginning. Thank you, guys. Um, but this is not the end of you guys. Obviously, every week, Homie Picks will be on the same network, the same channel. You can watch it on... 2020vision.com slash picks. Uh, there's also a promo code for FanDuel Sportsbook. You guys can also play along for entertainment purposes. Uh, you know, have fun and enjoy the entertainment of picking and choosing. Because even when we don't put money on this, I just like laughing at them because my team was the only team that won this week. So it's all fun. <laughs> it's all entertainment. That's what it's all about. You know, yes, it's all for fun. It's all for fun. Like, yeah. I, like I like I said in our episode, we, we're not professional cappers here, and we're not claiming to be. Right. So it's all for fun. Right. But so far, the standings: Jared and Lou is tied four and one. Ben is at the bottom of two and three. It's so all right. You you guys got your own little you know uh, 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 standings going on. I don't know if you put something on it or you guys got a little friendly wager or something on it. You know, if you want to make it interesting. Loser got to go to the Giants game. Oh, whew. <laughs> Loser got to wear a Daniel Jones jersey. Whew. <laughs> Jeez, you trying to get that man uh, picked I, on I, outside. I don't know. I, I think the Panthers are, are trying to give them competition, man, because they were <laughs> horrible. Well, we, we, I didn't we, expect we, them to be that bad. We can't wait for that Thursday night. Game in oh, was it Friday night or Saturday, something like that in Germany. It has to be a Saturday, yeah. Yeah, the Germany game, Saturday. man. That's gonna that's be gonna a be a watch. snooze fest. I feel <laughs> bad for the people of Germany right now. I'm Little way you can perform at that game. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. That's not the best. You guys are not seeing the best. <laughs> November tenth. <laughs> that's gonna be bizarre. Zero, zero, zero into overtime at nine thirty in the morning. <laughs> Woof. Yeah, nobody's watching that. Nobody's waking up. Nobody's waking up to watch that. Like everybody's gonna catch the fourth quarter. I feel bad for Jeremy. Dude, yeah. at, at this point, I believe they're selling um Panthers tickets, two tickets, you know, not uh upper tier stadium for a dollar eighty. A dollar eighty for two tickets. That's how bad they are right now. When, when I'm down week in Charlotte, one, I'm gonna see who they playing. Might it's catch week game. one. <laughs> So that's a yeah. four-hour drive for me. That might be worth it. You know what I'm saying? I'll drive to MetLife. <laughs> might, might buy the whole stadium out. <laughs> Seriously. A holiday party. You know? Just buy the whole stadium out for $100. <laughs> Seriously. It's crazy. I did, I, I, yo, it's week one. How? how could, wow. I was yeah. shocked when I found that out. <laughs> yeah. But once again, thank you, fellas. 
You know what I'm saying? Thank everybody for listening. Thank everybody for watching. Thank you guys for being you. See you next time. Later. Let's ride.